So by that, with 8% potentials, I think China will be able to grow at around 6% in 2022 and the coming years. Well, thank you very much for your introduction. And it's a great honor for me to come back to the World Knowledge Forum. And I'd like to talk about the issue. Is there a risk of China's growth? And China is important, not because I'm a Chinese, but also because China now is the second largest economy measured by market change rate. And the largest economy measured by purchasing power parity. And China is also the largest trading partners of more than 120 countries in the world. And the second largest trading partners of another 70 and more countries in the world. So it's their adjustment in China's growth. No matter it's boom or bust, will have a large impact on the world economy. And as you know, China's growth has been a miracle since the 1978, average at 9.2% per year in the past 42 years. But there's a lot of concern about the possibility for China to maintain its dynamic economic growth in the coming years for several reasons. One thing is aging. China now has entered into a situation of aging society. And as you know, in most other countries, when they, are, when they encounter aging, their economic performance deteriorate substantially. And then secondly, it's due to the recent regulatory storm of the internet company and so on. And then many people you know, worry China is going to change its course of economic development. Because during the past 40 years and so on, China performed well because China moved from the government-led planning economy to a market economy. And the tightening of the regulatory framework and so on, people worry China will move to the government debt growth. And also the US-China tensions. And certainly in the US is the largest economy, China is the second largest, or China is the largest, US is the second largest. If there are any in you know, a conflict, certainly it will affect the world. But in spite of all those concerns, I think that China will continue to grow substantially and continue to contribute about 30% of growth each year to the world economy in the coming years. The main reason <clears throat> for my confidence is that China still enjoy a large advantage of big ones. In 2019, the per capita GDP in China was only about 22.6% of the US economy. It was similar to Germany in 1946, Japan in 1956, and Korea in 1985. And for those three well-performing economies, they all grew on the average or 9% and more continuously for more than 15 years after they reached that income level compared to the US because they are all in the catching up stages. And China similarly is in the catching up stage. And how about the aging issue? <clears throat> we know the high income country in the past century, on the average, their growth rate was about 3%. Two percentage point coming from the improvement of labor productivity. One percent point, one percentage point coming from the population growth. And when a country facing the issue of aging, certainly population will stop growing and their you know, economy will deteriorate. And we know that in the past, most aging occur in the high-income country. And so when they're facing aging, their economic growth will reduce from 
around 3%, down to 2%. Certainly, that, uh, that make their economy appear to perform uh, 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 in a less dynamically or in a less satisfactory. But China, you know, certainly aging will reduce the population growth. But as I said, compared to Germany, Japan, and Korea, their growth was 9% or more. And so aging means there's no population growth. And then for other countries, their population growth was about 1%. So that means the China, you know, well, had to reduce from about 9% down to 8%. And with 8% growth potential, I think it's still huge. Then how about the recent regulatory framework, a uh, regulatory storm? I think that the intention was to rent the monopoly power of those huge you know, internet platform company like Alibaba. And uh, we know that in almost every country, there's a talk about the necessity to you know, reduce their monopoly power, but in many other countries, because of political capture, it's very hard to manage those kind of monopoly power. And I think people will be happy to see Chinese governments have the ability to you know, manage this monopoly power and create a much you know, better labor playing field for small and middle sized startup company. So in terms of the regulatory tightening, I think you know, it will prove to be favorable to economic growth in China instead of to be uh, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a barrier for growth in China. Then how about the US-China tension? I think the US-China tension mainly arises from the economic rivalry, as I mentioned, measured by market century in China is the large, second largest economy and by purchasing power parity. And China is the largest economy. And the US has the intention to use its power to contain China's growth. And I think this contention is going to be there for a long time. Uh, but for next year, I think the situation may be moderated somewhat. The, re the main reason is the inflationary pressure in the US. And the US rely heavily on the import of goods from China. And if this tension increase, certainly the cost for US you know, import either from China or from other country will increase. And that will add fuel to its inflation. And uh, because of the need to, you know, to, to contain inflation in the US, I think the relation between China and uh, US were, you know, you know, moderated somewhat. And not only so, I think the Chinese economy is very resilient. Even we talk about the threat of, you know, the pandemic, the Delta variants and so on, but China has the, you know, tested ability to contain it. And also, if there's some financial disruption in other country, I think that China can also manage it because not only China has three trillion US dollars of foreign reserve, but also China you know, has the capital account management. And so China can stop the large outflow of capital and causing reversion as in other country. And uh, internally, Chinese government still have a huge fiscal space and uh, monetary monetary policy space to adopt counter cyclical measure because uh, 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 you know governments that is a percentage of GDP in China is only about 60 percent among the lowest in the you know in the world and uh, interest rate in China is still about 10 percent and so if it's needed Chinese government can use an expansionary fiscal policy or monetary policy to support the economic growth. So by that, with 8% potentials, I think China will be able to grow at around 6% in 2022 and the coming years. And with that, China will contribute about 30% or more to the global growth. 
And so China was still the best place for economic growth, best place, best place for doing business. Thank you very much.